uh, today's session is, is not about how to turn camera. It's about how we can dance, how we can have fun. I cannot keep quiet anyway. Uh, thank you, thank you for coming, for attending. Um, I'm not an expert by any means on, on you know, things that we were going to talk today, but pretty much is based on my own experience. Um, very briefly, uh, I'm uh, originally from Guatemala. Guatemala is in Central America, Latin America. And we have uh, Canada, we have the States, we have Mexico, and then after Mexico South, is uh, Guatemala, the first country in Central America. But in 1985, I, I had to move out of the country, and I ended in Canada, in the city of London. Not London, England, but London, Ontario, Canada. So in Canada, we have provinces, we don't have states. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so I, as I explained, in Canada, we have provinces, no states, so there are about 10 provinces and two territories. And uh, the province of Ontario is the largest one in, in Canada with uh, most of the population. Canada is such a huge, huge country, but with very, very few people. Um, it has about 36 million people, the whole country. Imagine, I think that's the population of New Delhi, if I'm not wrong. Not only we have the largest territory, we're the second largest country in, in the whole world, but uh, we only have 36 million people because most of the people are concentrated in the provinces of Ontario, uh, British Columbia, Alberta, Quebec. The other provinces have people, obviously, but not as much as uh, Ontario. In Ontario, we have the one of the most, uh, I mean, well-known in one of the principal cities, uh, Toronto. Toronto is in, uh, in Ontario. And London is situated between Toronto and Detroit in the US. 200 kilometers exactly from one side to another. So, um, one of the things, just to give you a little bit of background, groups from, uh, from the, this continent, from the Asian continent, have always uh, toured in, in North America, have toured in Canada as well. Uh, we, with the festival, we brought uh, several groups from India, the Dio Gypsies of Rajasthan, uh, Jaipur Kawabras, uh, Musafir, and I don't recall others, but um, this is just to let you know that it is possible. It is possible to, for Asian uh, musical groups to tour Canada. Before I continue, maybe I, I should ask the question, how many of you here are musicians, you know? A good number of you. How many of you work in the arts management? Or, you know, you represent groups or something like that. Or who is studying music here? You know. Well, okay. Anyway, the bottom line is that um, one of the big challenges to tour Canada is precisely because it's a big, big country. If you wanna go, it's, it's like India. You know, if you wanna go from one province to another. You have to fly because there is no way that you can do a tour and, uh, and start driving from one province to another. No, it's very challenging. So, what the groups do sometimes is that they select portions of the country. Uh, for example, they come to Ontario and Quebec, which are the provinces that are together, because there are a lot of festivals going on, especially during the summertime. Summertime goes from uh, the end of June up to middle of September. And that's when most of the festivals, you know, outdoors are taking place. So, and, and that's across the country. So sometimes the groups come first to that particular area, and sometimes they go to the other side, the west of the country, uh, with British Columbia, Alberta, Saskatchewan. Because as I said, it's, it's really impossible to tour the, the to create a, a tour for, for the musical groups uh, and to do a, a cross-country um, precisely because of that. Now, uh, one of the beautiful things about Canada is that the requirements for 
going into Canada. I mean, the visa, the visa itself is, 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 is not easy to get it, but sometimes um, if we apply for the visas of the artists, uh, you know, four, five, six months in advance, it is possible. Yeah, you usually get the, the visas. Uh, in our case, we work with a lot of members of the parliament and they help us to do the process of the visas and to accelerate that. And it's not as as difficult as the states, you know. Uh, well, the states is so, as difficult as well. But I heard lately that um, lately that the visas in Canada have becoming a little bit more challenging than the states. But one of the, the most um, I think advantages that you can find coming into Canada is that the requirements for the groups to perform in Canada as not as difficult as they are in the States. In the States you have to really get a visa, uh, a working visa, a working permit to do it. And as far as I heard, they're very, very expensive. Uh, I heard that the, the last number is about $2,000 per musician, you know, just to get the visa. And in Canada, those kind of visas don't exist. Uh, so you need your visa in order to get to the country, but you know, that work visa permit, what we do is uh, if the artists are going to make more than, for example, $10,000 each, so we have to apply to the Canada government for a, a tax waiver. So in that case, you know, the artist, we don't have to retain any taxes. And that, that the normal process takes about three months and, and then you, so we have to apply for that. Not, not us, but sometimes it's the artist or the manager or the agency that represents the artist who have to do that in advance. And, um, and they will send you a resolution that yes, it's fine and we don't have to retain any money. But when the artists are not making more than $10,000, uh, we use a very kind of a simplified form where the artists, uh, each of members of the group, have to fill out that form. And uh, we don't send that form to the, to the government. We retain those forms. The festivals, so the presenters, uh, retain those forms just for the records because you never know when someone from that particular agency, from the government, is going to come in and say, you know, we need to do an audit of what you've been doing with the artists. And so then you have the, the papers there. So in that particular case, you know, it's, it's a little bit easier than going into the States. And that's why a lot of groups lately, they have decided to tour more into Canada than in the States, because precisely it's a big barrier there. So, but I guess um, what could make things easier for the artists to go into Canada is when the artists have a, an agency, for example, that represents them, or a manager, you know, someone who will take care of all those things, because it is very difficult for festivals, artistic directors, you know, to take into those particular duties, um, because it's very consuming. So you, what we do is uh, we send a letter of invitation to the group, you know, and then. We encourage them to apply for the visas, and then it will be the agency or the manager to start communicating with, uh, you know, the different agencies or the other festivals, for example, that might show interest in presenting the group. So this is something very important because there are some countries that have a lot of financial resources and sometimes they just tell the artist, as long as you play two or three times during the festival or, or two or three times during the time that you're gonna be there. So these agencies, uh, these government agencies pay for the troubles, for the, you know, the year tickets and stuff like that. For example, the Netherlands uh, is one of those countries that, you know, if the artists qualify, they will pay for all the expense, travel expenses. But of course, each festival will pay the artists a professional fee. Uh, we take care of them for the time that they're going to be with the festival. You know, accommodation, meals, local transportation. 
and uh, and it is a great help when uh, government agencies from other countries absorb those those expenses because it is very challenging as well to go from one continent to another, and uh, you know, air, air tickets are, are extremely extremely expensive. So that's one way. For example, South Korea helps tremendously their their artists. Uh, Every year, pretty much, for, for many years, we always have had uh, groups from uh, South Korea, one or two groups every year, because they apply for you know, travel assistance. So the government pays for their air tickets, and again, we just take care of them when they arrive into Canada. So uh, obviously, we treat them professionally, but you know, because there are not really that many festivals in Canada that will pay for the air tickets. You know. So you might ask, uh, you might ask yourself, so how can the groups, you know, uh, travel Canada if they don't get that kind of assistance from their own governments? So what we do is, um, you know, there is a network of festivals, and we get together once, twice in a year. To you know, to share ideas on which artists are going to be touring, and how can we share you know some of the expenses and so on. So the whole idea is that the group you know can travel at least for at least two weeks, play three, four, five different festivals, and each festival, each festival is going to propose an offer to the to the artist, and of course, many festivals, but with different budgets as well. Some festivals with larger budgets, some other festivals with smaller budgets. And what we do is, uh, so we put together those offers and we tell the artists, okay, this festival is gonna pay this, this, and this. This is in total what you're gonna be getting. And, um, and then the artists will evaluate if with that money they can cover all the expenses, traveling. Of course, it's not fun to go and lose money, right? But if you are in the position that things will be break even, you know, losing any money, it's it's a great investment because you know you will be touring for the very first time, you know, uh, into that part of the world. And uh, but that's precisely the the job that each of these uh, agencies or managers are going to do. We, you know, for example, if I am interested in a group that is showcasing. The showcase yesterday or today, uh, I will share that information with my festivals, uh, with my colleagues from other festivals, and I will express my interest saying, we want to bring this group, who is interested? In, and then we put together, you know, three or four festivals that might get interested, you know, it's a, it's a possibility that then, you know, we propose an offer to the group. And, um, but as I said, it, it has to be, uh, you have to be aware that, you know, this, don't think that you, you'll go to, to Canada with the mentality that you're going to make a lot of money. It's just basically, you know, and I said that this morning, you know, things are challenging for the artists, but things are also challenging for the, for the festivals, for the presenters, because we are in exactly the same, in the same situation. You know. Sometimes uh, festivals lose uh, sponsorships, for example. Sometimes uh, government grants that you're supposed to receive, sometimes they are not available. You know, in, um, so that varies from one festival to another. And um, there are only very few who are very commercial festivals that will have enough money. And in our case, this is our particular case, with Sunfest, it's a free admission festival. So what we have to do is, we have to generate all kinds of revenues so that we can continue the festival free and accessible to, to everyone. So we do all kinds of fundraising activities. We do have a huge market of vendors, and I don't know if some of you were in the session this morning and saw the videos. We have all kinds, it's, it's, a, it's a, a big market of international cuisine, craft, art, you know, and that, that's where we generate a lot of funds so that we can, you know, 
and we have the support of a, the largest bank in Canada right now that has been with us for the last 10 years. But those are things, uh, contracts with the sponsorships, that you have to renovate every single year. So you don't know if the following year you're going to get those funds. So this is just because it is important for you to know that, you know, and I said that this morning as well. We've been in this business, many of our colleagues here have been in this business for so many years, but nothing is secure, nothing. You know, things can change from one time to another. So, yeah, as a presenter, as a festival presenter, festival director, uh, when we're interested in one particular group, things will be easier for us if that group has someone who can take care or uh, take the role of a manager of an agency because the communication will be you know direct with this person and, and the only thing that we will do is share with them the information about the other festivals and they will be the responsibility of this particular person to communicate to connect with those festivals knowing that they are part of the tour as well but you know but sometimes it happens that when we feel so passionate about one, about one particular group Sometimes we end up taking that particular role as well. And it's very consuming, you know. And that has happened to me so many times when they said, I love that group and I really want them to, them to, to be at the festival. And, uh, and they don't have any agency, any representation. It is challenging for us as well. And I ended up doing the work of a, a manager, an agent. And uh, yeah, it is very, very tiring for sure and very demanding. But. Of course, it's one limitation, but that doesn't mean that it's impossible to do it. So uh, things can be, uh, and especially we, when we organize things uh, with long, you know, in a time in advance, things can work better. Most of the time, the festivals in Canada, um, they, we usually meet uh, closer to the end of the year so that we can have enough time to make sure of who we want to bring. And we're talking about the international ones, right? Because the national ones is not a problem. But are the international ones? And, and again, one of the most challenging things in some instances are, are the visas, especially from uh, artists coming from Africa, from the Middle East, from Asia, even from Latin America. Sometimes it's very challenging. Europe is not a, much of a problem because, you know, there are they don't need visa. Most of the European countries don't require visa to get into Canada. It's not fair, you know. Because, yeah. it's, but it's part of the struggle, right? In um, so that's one of the things that we always advise to the groups. You know, we'll invite you, we'll send you the letter, but you have to initiate the process. As soon as they, you know, send the the documents. Uh, they will get a, you know, a, a number uh, for their files, and we get those numbers, and we start working with the members of parliament, and they will accelerate that process as much as possible. And believe me, sometimes we have solved uh, con uh, situations very, very challenging. I want to tell you one example. Uh, there was this group from Colombia that I really loved, and we. Uh, they have a good manager, a good agency, and she was very well organized, and she put all the applications for visa, let's say in February. So at the end of March, she got the results, and everyone in the group got the visa, except the leader of the bank. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So she said to me, we have this problem because everyone has got the visa, but not him. And at this point, nobody else from the group is aware that their own leader didn't get the visa. And I said, so what was the issue? What did he tell you? And what he says is that this guy, for a while, lived in Canada, okay, for two or three years in Montreal. And, but he was living there illegally. And so, when the immigration came and told him that he had to leave, of course he, in a very voluntary way, said, okay, I'm gonna leave. 
And of course, the, the government uh, paid for his flight to take him back to Colombia. So, when you are doing the application for Canadian visa, there is one question that says, have you ever been deported from Canada? Anyway, but I think uh, the atmosphere, and most of the festivals, in, and especially in Canada, it, it, it's a very good atmosphere. Uh, people feel, feel really welcome, and uh, when they come to Canada, it, it's a very welcoming country in many aspects. Of course, we're still facing issues of racism and discrimination there as well, but we, you know. And the other aspect that I wanted to, to let you know is that uh, the Canadian government as well uh, has a program for international groups. So, and how does it work? If we get three or four festivals that are interested in that particular group, so we submit an application to this agency, which is called the Canada Council for the Arts. It's a competition as well. But, um, you know, two or three months later, they will tell you. And, uh, and basically, how does it work? If they approve your application, and then they give you, you know, uh, the funds. So the whole idea of the, of the grant is that when the group arrives in Canada, this grant, these funds, will cover the needs of the group while they are not engaged in each of those festivals. For example, if the group is going to arrive, arrive on Tuesday and the festival starts on Friday, just to give an idea, so this grant is going to help this group to pay for their accommodations, their meals, before they get into the festival, because the festival will take care of accommodations and meals and, and local transportation. So it's a, a tremendous help. Last year, um, we, brought, uh, we applied for uh, support for a group from Colombia. In, uh, we, have, we have about five festivals that apply for part of this project. And we ended up getting about $75,000, know, which was huge. It was tremendous because it was a large band, an 11 piece band. And uh, you know, you can imagine you know, supporting 11 people on the road for three or four weeks is not that easy. And we were very lucky that we got that group. There was another group from India called Musafir. We also did an application for them, and we got money. And they took several provinces, you know, because with that grant you can actually fly into another province. You know, that's precisely what it is. If we have festivals in the other side of the country interested in that particular group, so all these festivals will apply together, and that will help for these groups to go from one province to another. So, which is truly amazing. There are not that many, uh, you know, applications that are approved, but when the projects are unique, uh, you know, that really makes a big difference, as well as the number of festivals that get interested into this particular area. So, that's another way of, so that will be on top of what each of the festivals will cover for each, uh, you know, for paying a, a fee and, you know, hospitality per diem and all those extra expenses. So those are the ways of more or less where you can tour Canada. As I said, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a large country. It's a, you know, so the groups usually do portions of the country first. Because what happened is, um, every time that we get together with the rest of the festivals, again, we share experiences. And we said, you know what, we brought this group this year, and they're interested, they're available next year for the other side of the country. And, uh, and usually this, you know, there are different ways through which festivals programmers like me select, you know, their musical arts. One is coming to a conference like this, which are the best experiences because you will see the groups live performing, you know, actively. The second is, uh, another, another way of doing this is by, uh, you know, advices from your colleagues from other festivals saying, you know what, this group is fantastic, it's amazing, we recommend you, and that's the way it is. And the other way is that, you know, sometimes you get uh, unsolicited, uh, you know, applications, and sometimes those applications that you, you were not expecting to receive, you'll see incredible music, you know, incredible talented music that uh, musicians and that's another way that 
you go through. And also, during the course of the years, sometimes you have a wish list and say, oh, I'd like to bring this group this year, but it couldn't happen, so we're gonna wait for the next year. And of course, all these groups, are, I mean, there is no lack of talent here. There is always uh, all kinds of possibilities. But that's, uh, you know, that's another way of, of uh, how we go about selecting groups. So, uh, and this is precisely one of our main goals coming here. Uh, hopefully, we'll, we'll, we'll be able to engage some of these groups to come to our festivals. And, you know, and that would be a good beginning, you know, for groups from this area. And that will set up a precedent so that other groups, opening almost the window, the, the way for other groups to come uh, and, and visit us, you know, in, in, in the course of the years. And as I said, uh, uh, most of us always are invited to go to many, many different music markets. And um, it, is, it is very beautiful because you have the chance not only to travel and to go to other countries, but to discover so much, so much. There is, uh, it's truly a learning experience, you know, for all of us. Don't, don't ever think that we as festival programmers come here knowing everything. No, that's not true. You know, we come here to learn as well. You know? It's a mutual process. You, know? you learn from us, but we also learn from you. And this is the best way to approach it. Uh, we have some colleagues that they believe that they know everything, but they don't know anything. You just, they just have an attitude. But it's nice to have a, no, no, this is, I mean, you know, in every sector, you have all kinds of people, you know. I think uh, all the festival colleagues here are, are very beautiful people. I know so many of them, and we've been, you know, been friends and colleagues for so many years. But we also know that sometimes, when these markets take place, and you know, a lot of people are getting invited, you know, and getting by them means that they will cover your travel, you know, they put you in a hotel, everything. But sometimes they just come for holidays. You know? And sometimes they don't care about, you know. You have to be responsible as well. You have to go to every single showcase. You have, even if you like it or not a group, or sometimes there are fantastic groups that perhaps don't fit into the, you know, into the philosophy of your festival, but that doesn't mean that they are bad. It's just simply that, you know. But you have the responsibility to attend those showcases because that's why they brought you, you know. And also you have the moral, the moral commitment of returning that investment, you know, by selecting, if not this year, probably next year, one of those groups that you saw in one particular market. And believe me, there is nothing more beautiful than uh, when you go to a, a specific music market and you see one band that you really like and and then the band is playing in your festival a year later or two years later, and that feeling is just absolutely mesmerizing. You said, "Oh, we made it! You know, we did it!" And this is this is so rewarding in that particular aspect. So, anyway, so as I said, you know, opportunities for touring Canada for sure uh, are they challenging? Of course, every 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 country has its own challenges, but. Uh, are things possible to make it happen? Absolutely, you know. And uh, this is, uh, as I said, many ways of doing this. And, uh, and we could also access to local funds, you know, if, uh, if we convince other festivals to support that particular act. I don't know if you have any, if you have any questions at the moment, if you have any, any doubts, more than happy to respond to, to you. Um, because, um, you know, I know that uh, this, this perhaps could be a, um, an overwhelming session and thinking that uh, this will never happen to you, but you know, in my own experience, um, I actually created the festival. I'm the founder of the festival. We're gonna celebrate over 30 years this coming July, 30 years. And for 11 years, I did the role of artistic director on a voluntary basis, you know? because I knew that in the beginning you have to invest a lot in uh, your own energy. I was lucky enough that I could survive. I'm a musician myself, and I was playing a lot of music, and I was able to survive making that income. But there was just a time when they said, this is enough. This is so demanding. 
that I really need to see and find a way of how can I make you know, this position a pay position so that we, I can continue doing the, the work that I love to do. And, uh, and as I said, I love to the rest of my colleagues, you know, and this kind of businesses, you don't make that much money, but you fit the spirit and you have a lot of fun. That's, you know, it's much better sometimes than someone who is working in a, an office from nine to five, you know, or in a factory or whatever, you know, working in the arts has so many rewards that you can obtain, you know, because it, it, it is so beautiful what it is, yeah. So, any questions? For example, who, who is a musician here? Get up, uh, raise your hands, musician. Yeah, okay. You have any any doubts, any questions? Huh? The, 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 my best advice to you is to persevere. You know, be there, uh, believe in what you you really want to do. Uh, that's pretty much my my own experience as well. Because I'll tell you, I I landed in a in a city that I I arrived in Canada in 1985. In, uh, in that city, London, where I live, it was there was no diversity at all. It was a totally Anglo-Saxon community, and um, of course, a lot of issues with racism and discrimination. And when I came back, when I came about with this idea of doing a festival that could reflect the diversity of the country, because Canada is so culturally diverse, you know, at that time, my city wasn't like that, but other cities were already having a lot of people from other places. So everyone was telling me, why do you want to do this in, in this city? Look at your surroundings. There is only anglo people, you know. I didn't know how to respond to this. So a Japanese tango group, you know, or a tabla group, or a salsa band, you know, those groups coming from other parts of the world. And, uh, you know, I proved them that they were wrong because now the festival is one of the largest festivals in Canada, you know, and uh, it's the, one of the most culturally diverse festivals. And it's, uh, we are very proud of saying it's one of the very few festivals that is truly accessible to everyone in the community because from the moment that we created the festival, we always thought arts and culture have to be accessible to everyone. And uh, there is nothing more beautiful and seeing families from all over the world having a fantastic time in the park, you know, regardless of the color of the skin, the language that they speak, but having fun there and everyone coming together is nothing more beautiful than that. So we always said we're very proud of the numbers of people that come to the festival because during the four days, it's about 200,000 people that come to the festival. Uh, the artistic quality of the programming, extremely proud. But the most important thing, the most amazing thing, is the social impact of the festival. Because that's why you see the music is such a powerful vehicle in bringing people together. This is exactly what the festival has accomplished. And how have we how, how been able to do this? You know, by presenting the richness of cultures of the world that really make up uh, you know, the the social composition of places like Canada. Toronto, uh, which is the biggest city in Canada, now the Anglo-Saxon communities are the minority because people of color now are the majority in a city like, uh, like Toronto, which has about three and a half million people. But now the Anglo-Saxon communities, you know, so things are changing dramatically. And, uh, you know, and the best way to reflect that is through art through festivals, through music, and it's exactly. So in that regards, Canada is very open to that. And that's what I'm saying, you know, there are a lot of opportunities for the artists, uh, you know, to engage possibilities to come to, to Canada, you know, you know. And as soon as you start traveling, uh, that is gonna start increasing your profile and saying, oh yeah, we play, you know, Sunfest in Canada, we play, you know, uh, other festivals, and that opens the door for exploring other geographical areas in Europe, in Africa, in Latin America. Once again, any other questions? No, no, no any other questions. The 
The first question. <laughs> I'm also only a part-time musician, okay. and uh, you know we have a fusion band also. So my question is, uh, what are the genres which will be acceptable, and what kind of uh, you know music is good for the for bands from here to to go and perform there? Thank well, there are all kinds of festivals, jazz festivals, blues festivals, folk music, and uh, global music festivals like ours. Uh, there is opportunities for all kinds of styles of music. I know one particular case. Yeah, for us, we address, you know, uh, we really work with groups that really showcase the richness of other cultures, you know, uh, what we call world music, basically, or global music. And we complement the program with jazz as well, and yeah, all kinds of jazz. You know, not, not, not just contemporary jazz or standard jazz, but Latin jazz, African jazz, all that kind of styles. So there are um, diversity of festivals. You know, our friends from Japan, uh, they are uh, they're very heavy on rock. You know, that's that's the main thing. And sometimes they complement the programs with you know traditional band from somewhere. Uh, Chile and us, we do what we call world music. You saw the guy from. Uh, Thailand, yeah, it's, it's very heavy rock, metal as well oriented. So there are kinds of festivals like that in Canada as well. So it, it is a matter of getting into the right network of festivals. You know, sometimes I, you know, sometimes because I like to dance a lot, sometimes I'm dancing in front of rock bands and so on, you know, and they come to me and give me their material. And they said, no, oh, you know, thank you for sharing your material, you know, but I'm gonna recommend you with someone that I know that produces a rock festival, because we don't really do rock like that, right? It's, uh, but there is always possibilities, yeah. So, you know, from what I've seen here uh, yesterday, uh, you know, there are possibilities for many of those groups, um, because there are festivals that where the music will perfectly fit. I really thank you for being here, for listening to me, uh, you know, I hope um, one day we can have the chance to, to see you in North America, in, in Canada especially. Uh, I mean, he knows what, what Canada is all about. And, uh, you know, it's a very friendly country, culturally diverse. And um, it's truly a global village to live in Canada. And yeah, if you, have, if, if you don't feel that, you know, like the courage of asking the question anymore, Front of everyone. Anyway, uh, stick around. Please approach me. I'm more than happy to share my experiences and insights with you. Okay? Thanks so much for attending.